Hello, my name is David Friesner, and as a member of the 2007 graduating class at Greenville Christian School, I would like to welcome you onto our campus. For over 30 years, Greenville Christian School has been providing an excellent education centered on God's truths. For the pre kers and kindergartners, one of their most favorite times is praise and worship during chapel. Next, you will hear one of their favorite songs. Every year, students like us participate in a National History Day. This year, it was led by our sponsor, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith? Well, I've been at GCS for 11 years, but even before that, when I was in college, I was involved in the National History Day competition. I was a judging assistant for a number of years, and then I judged the show for about three years before I came here. It's a competitive fair. It's a lot like a science fair. Every year the students are given a broad theme and they can research any historical topic that's based on that theme. This year was triumph and tragedy. They can pick any topic they want as long as they can link it to that theme. So I had diverse topics, everything from Hannibal of Carthage to uh, Alfred Nobel. And we did well this year. We had five entries that are advancing to state and three that placed as alternates. We've had as many as nine go to state before, but in the 11 years I've been here, we have gone to state competition and National History Day every single year. And last year we had a young man who made the callback round at state. Uh, first and second place actually get to advance to a national competition. My goal before I retire is to take one student to nationals. That's, our, that's kind of our big hope. Hi, I'm Cody Joe Jackson. I'm Kelsey Gilmer. I'm Ashton McGee. And we did a History Day project for National History Day at A&M and Commerce. And ours was over Robert F. Kennedy. And we won third prize in the senior exhibit division. I'm Paisley Zimmerman. I'm Andrew Moonbaker. And I'm Samantha Blakemore. And the fourth member of our team is Matthew Lee, but he's sick today. And this is the board that we did on Alfred Nobel, Dynamite, and the Nobel Peace Prize for National History Day. We won first place in the junior division for um, exhibit board and we're going to, in our district and we're going to stay in April. And we did our board on Alfred Nobel. The fifth graders did projects on the science fair this year. They competed in our district meet for the science fair, and they did things such as physical science and life science. Hi, I'm Andrew Eastwood, and this is my science fair project. And I looked on the internet and in books, and so I was just looking for one to do. And I found this one. Can a human body create an electric current? So what you did was you got two pieces of metal 
and it said the best ones to use were copper, copper and aluminum. So my first test, I used a piece of copper wire and aluminum Coke can tab to see if it worked, and it did. So then my dad went out to his work and he got actually like pieces of metal. So we used those and hooked it up to his amp meter, which is a device that measures electricity. It doesn't make it. So what you do is you hold on to one piece of metal and hold on to the other piece and the meter should read electricity because when you hold the copper it just starts it doesn't connect to this one so when you hold them like that then you're being the conductor hello my name is alicia and this is my science project it is what is a wind turbine and how does it work i decided i decided on this project because i was looking for one to do and one afternoon we were going to the we we're going to walmart and we saw a truck carrying parts of a wind turbine. And so that sparked my imagination and I was wondering what that was. So I asked my dad about it and he said it was this. So I looked it up on the computer and I decided why not do this for my science project. Well, a wind turbine is a modern windmill that converts wind into electricity. That electricity is used in some homes, businesses, and offices. How a wind turbine works is the wind blows, which spins this. The spinning of this spins the shaft of a generator, and the shaft of the generator spins a rotor. The rotor is a, a wire continuously wrapped along a magnetic frame. When the rotor spins, that is what creates the electricity. The electricity is then sent to the user by wires. There are two types of wind turbines, the horizontal wind turbine and the vertical axis wind turbine. The vertical axis wind turbine spins like a merry-go-round, and this spins like an airplane propeller or a ferris wheel. The vertical axis wind turbine is not as popular as the horizontal axis because even though it can catch the wind from, from every direction, it cannot, um, the blades are not pitched enough. Pitch means like twisted or angled, so they can make the most of the wind whenever they spin. So those are not as popular as the horizontal. And the horizontal, they are, they look like this. And um, on some of the bigger, bigger models, this part can be turned so it can face the wind. And the good things about these are that they're another way to make clean electricity and um, they, some people think they make the landscape look interesting and attractive, although some people think they don't. The bad things about them are that they are noisy, even though they are getting to be quieter, and a um, large number of birds can be killed by the rotating blades. In conclusion, these are another way to make clean electricity, but when the wind doesn't blow, they don't work and some people don't like them, but others do. Hi, I'm Hayden Adams, and stay tuned for more fun stuff from Greenville Christian School after these messages. For the fourth year in a row, GCS students competed in the TAPS Art and Academic Meet. For the second year in a row, GCS brought home the district championship. 25 students will be competing in the state meet in Austin, Texas in various events. I'm Jordan Sullivan. My original oratory won third place at the district meet. Is there really a human race? Is it going on now all over the place? When did it start? Who said, ready, set, go? I really must know. Why am I racing? What am I winning? And why do I do it this zillion yard dash? Jamie Lee Curtis asked these questions in her children's book, Is There Really a Human Race? Today's infants may one day soon ask themselves these questions. Unborn babies are being exposed to music and literature in hopes of giving them a head start on learning. But doesn't it seem a bit excessive to ask children to be a success before they're even born? Are the pressures too much for today's infants to handle? 
And how can one so small cope with all of the pressures that they face? I believe it is harmful to push children too hard to excel academically at such an early age. These pressures can be harmful socially, emotionally, and physically. How do you feel when you face stress constantly? Yet, you probably had the advantage of a more comfortable and traditional childhood without the pressure of being forced to excel academically so soon. Children used to develop their social skills simply by playing and being with other children. However, this unstructured daycare setting is largely a thing of the past. According to the September 11, 2006 edition of Newsweek magazine, daycare is becoming more like an SAT prep class. Instead of finger painting and story time, children are now being given math sheets to work along with reading, writing, and spelling exercises. Crib mobiles of clowns and animals are being replaced with black and white geometric shapes. Instead of stuffed animals and rattles as early playthings, there's a whole new line of toys developed to make a baby's brain develop earlier than it normally would. Pushing too hard can also have harmful physical effects. In order to have more time in the classroom, PE and recesses are being taken away. This not only poses a threat to the child's health, but also to their learning ability. Without the time to take a break from sitting at a desk all day and burn energy, children lose interest in what they are being taught and may become cranky, impatient, anxious, or hyper. Imagine how disruptive this can be to the learning environment. According to CNN.com, the obesity rate in children is 11% and rising every day. The physical education program is a necessary part of a child's education and well-being. Physical activity of any kind, at a minimum, is able to reduce some of the stress that children face. Stress can lead to obesity and high blood pressure, yet physical activity can combat both of these. So why are we removing the PE and recess from the school schedule? Children have a natural curiosity and desire to learn. Let's encourage that curiosity and allow their imaginations to run wild. Let's provide the best education possible without burning them out before junior high. If we ask our children to begin living like adults in their childhood, what's left? Childhood is to be a reservoir for all of the challenges that we face later in life. We need the delight and simple things that we discover as children just to get through the day sometimes. Haven't you ever been happy just seeing a rainbow? Adulthood comes quickly enough. We should not allow childhood to become a dress rehearsal for becoming an adult. Children will flourish on their own if we give them the opportunity without the harmful social, emotional, and physical effects of pushing too hard too soon. Children's questions of what's this or what's that, how does this work, why not, are being eliminated by being exposed to forced academic instruction too soon. I am not advocating missing this opportunity, and I do not believe that it should be abused by forcing academic instruction on children and infants without giving them the privilege of a childhood or unstructured play. As Miss Curtis says, sometimes it is better not to go fast. Okay. Paper or plastic? Would you like fries with that? What should I wear tonight? We all make decisions every day, and most of them are easy. Paper is better for the environment. Not fries, but a salad is better for my environment. In a little black dress, it goes with everything. But sometimes decisions can be difficult to make, especially in relationships when your emotions get all mixed up, especially when you have to choose between what you know is best and what you want so badly, especially when you have to let someone go. This struggle between the head and the heart is the essence of Kristen O'Keefe Aptowitz's poem, Lit. Don't say you didn't see this coming, Jason. Don't say you didn't realize this would be my reaction and that you never intended for me to get all worked up. <laughs> because if that were true, then you were dumber than Lenny from Mice and Men, blinder than Oedipus and Tiresias put together and can feel less than a Dalton Trumbo character. But you don't understand any of these references, do you, Jason? Because you don't read. You're a geology major, and you once told me, scientists don't read popular literature, Kristen. We have more important things to do. <laughs> well, be glad you don't read, Jason, 
because maybe you will understand this. Jason, you are more absurd than Ionesco, more abstract than Joyce, more inconsistent than Agatha Christie, and more satanic than Rusty's verses. You used to make fun of me being a writer, saying, scientists cure diseases, what do writers do? But, of course, you wouldn't understand, Jason. I mean, have you ever gotten an inner Thurston for Zora Neale Hurston or heard Angel's Herald for F. Scott Fitzgerald? Have you ever had a beat attack for Jack Kerouac? The only Morrison you know is Jim, and you think you're the noble one? Your heart is so dark that even Joseph Conrad couldn't see it. Your mind is as empty as the libraries in Fahrenheit 451. Your mind is as empty as Silas Marner's coffers. Your mind is as empty as Huckleberry Finn's wallet. And some people might say that this poem is just a pretentious exercise in seeing how many literary references I can come up with. And some people might complain that this poem is at its core, shallow, expressing the same emotion again and again and again. I mean, there are only so many times you can articulate your contempt for Jason before people get bored. But you know what, Jason? Those people would be wrong because this is not the poem I'm writing to express my hatred for you. This is the poem I'm writing because we aren't speaking and it is making my heart hurt so bad that it's all I can do just to get up off the floor sometimes. And this is the poem I'm writing instead of writing the I miss having breakfast with you poem, or the I wish I was making fun of how much you like Garth Brooks while sitting in front of your parents' house in your Jeep poem. Instead of the the holidays are coming around and you know what that means? Suicide poem. I'm writing this so I can stop wanting to write the I could fall in love with you again so quickly if you would just say one more word to me poem. But I'm tired of loving you, Jason, because you don't love me right. And if some pretentious poem can stop me from thinking about the way your laugh sounds or about the way your skin feels in the rain, about how I would rather be miserable with you than happy with anyone else in the world, if some pretentious poem can do all that, then I'm gone with the wind. I'm on the road. I've flown over the cuckoo's nest. I'm gone. I'm gone. I am gone. I am. Hi, I'm Jessica. Hi, I'm Stephanie. We We're are fourth, fourth graders, graders at GCS. GCS. Stick around for more on campus after these messages. I'm Sydney Martin and... I'm Kirk Nelson. And this is a piece we're taking to the Taps State Academic Meet. It is a, in the duet acting category, and we hope you enjoy it. Do you remember your first day at camp? Does that anxious feeling rise in your stomach? Will we have mystery meat on a bun every night? Does my hair look all right? Do we get to roast marshmallows? Am I going to have enough clothes? Do I have to take a shower every day? Do we get to take a shower every day? Who, Who am, am I going, going to, to meet? meet? On Second Thought by Ken Bradbury. Um, is this taken? Uh, no. Do you mind if Go I... Go ahead. <laughs> I've never been to camp before. Me either. Yeah. Dad always has to be every place early. Like, we'll die if we're not the first ones there. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this. I really hate this. My first day of summer camp and I don't know a soul. The first guy I meet and he doesn't want a thing to do with me. She's hot. Kind of cute, in a guy sort of way. Guys hate girls who talk too much, and that's all I've done. I don't even want to know what he's thinking of me right now. Did I get my suitcase? I wonder if he noticed my shorts were wrinkled. Ugh. A three-hour drive, what's he expect? And he looks like the intellectual type. I bet he's got me figured out already. I wonder when we eat. Should have had another bowl of cereal. 
I smelled like when I walked up? <sighs> Dad's cigar. Great. He probably thinks I'm a truck driver. But I did see him smile just a little bit. Something smells like Grandpa. He sort of got that far away look in his eyes, like a dreamer or a poet or something. I'll bet that's what he is, an intellectual hunk who likes long walks on the beaches of Tahiti while the tide casts silvery streaks on the sand. I wonder if they got a basketball court around here. I can't go all week without shooting any hoops. No, he's a musician. Yeah, that's it. Just look at that profile. I can see it on the front of a CD. A little fog, some laser lights, then he rips off his shirt. Man, it's hot. How long are they going to make us wait here? And just look at those fingers, shaped just to fit around the neck of a guitar. I'll bet he's not even a camper. He's a guest performer they sent in for the week. I can't wait to tell everybody I sat by a rock star on my first day of camp. Can't wait to tell Mom that Damn, fried me alive! And you know, these big stars are usually pretty lonely. I'll bet he just wants a good friend to talk to. Someone he can share his innermost thoughts with. We could bond this week. All the big shows would want an interview, and he'd just be thinking, I wish I had that good friend from back at that wonderful camp. What a dump. I can't believe I let Mom talk me into coming to this place. They're probably going to make us sing those stupid campfire songs. I hate music. I don't mean to be silly, but this could lead to something big. I mean big. To marry an international star and travel all over the world. And they'll probably make us walk everywhere, too. They should give us our own golf carts. That would be. Thousands of people. <sighs> New York one week, and then off to do a concert for the Queen in London the next. Oh, <sighs> Do they let the star's wife meet the Queen? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'd be shopping in every expensive store in town. Sure, sweetheart, here's the credit card. Burn it up, honey. I hope I brought enough money for Cokes. Mom said $5 would be enough. But I did want to make a lanyard, and, you know, you got to buy the string here or whatever. Whatever they call it. I don't know. What do they call it? Anyway, I get a red and a blue string, and then I'll spiral it. Maybe if I'm feeling kind of, you know, dangerous, I'll get a third one. You know, it's a very intricate process, of course, but once you get it going, it looks very nice in the end, and, you know, I bet my mom would just love it. I could put a bead on the end, and it, it'd just be beautiful. Hmm. I probably wouldn't see him that much with me shopping and him in the studio. I wonder what he'd be doing when he says he's at work. Oh, sure. I'll just bet he is. You send me out with a credit card while well, you make eyes at every girl in town. You're a real jerk. I want a relationship with you, and all you want is some trophy wife. You think the whole world revolves around you, Buster. Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't. I don't even want to talk about it. Let's just forget we even had this conversation. I wish you'd at least say something. I never could talk to girls. Sure. Just sit there and gloat. Men, so smug, like you know everything. Maybe I should ask her where she's from. And you think you've got me wrapped around your little finger. Nah, she probably hasn't even thought about me. Although I am devilishly handsome. After the, what we've been through, and you treat me like this. Hey, how's it... How dare you speak to me? Huh? After the way you've treated me. I'm sorry. I can't believe it. I just shouted at him. Oh, how stupid can I be? Just look at that hurt look on his face. I've ruined his self-respect. He'll never speak to me again. He'll never speak to anybody again. I saw that in a movie once. This guy just got such a shock that he forgot how to speak. Oh. Then he wandered the streets of New York, looking through dumpsters, searching for orange rinds, until one day he just gave up and jumped off a bridge. Oh, I just want to die. Oh well, she's a girl. What do you expect? I wonder if they're going to make us eat hot dogs every night. What if they find out it was me that caused him to jump? How am I going to explain that to Mom? She told me to stay out of trouble this week. Now I'm in national headlines. Girl causes mute boy to jump off Brooklyn Bridge, stemming from incident at summer camp. Do they let you take your dog to prison with you? I've never seen that in the movies. 
Oh no, I forgot, I'm cheerleader next fall. Boy, my timing really stinks. And it's all because of you, Buster. I had it made, cheerleading, the prom, my new car, and now I'm stuck with this life sentence. I hope you're happy with yourself. I really hope you're happy. Look, I'm sorry if I didn't Don't think... speak to me. Huh? I did it again. Where's the phone? I gotta get out hey, of here. Hey, where are you going? Isn't this where we're supposed to register? Um, I... Uh, is something wrong? I'm sorry. I... <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. I got a sister. I know what it's like. Can you believe that guy? Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> don't worry about it. I got a sister. I know what it's like. Is that too sweet or what? Don't worry about it. I got a sister. I know what it's like. What's he mean by that? Are you saying girls can't handle their emotions? That girls can't control their feelings? Well, listen to me, Buster. At least I don't sit there like some insensitive slug and say things like, don't worry about it. I got a sister. I know what it's like. Well, I feel sorry for your sister, kiddo, and any girl who pours out her feelings to you just so you can tromp them in the mud. Mud. Great. There goes the basketball games. Is this seat taken? Why, no it isn't. Do you mind if I... Go ahead. I've never been to camp before. Me either. Yeah, Dad always has to be every place early. Like we'll die if we're not the first ones there. Yeah, fathers. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking. Really? About what? Oh, never mind. Let's just talk. Cool.